big fan. So let's go talk about Andor. Or should I say let's talk about let's talk about seventy five percent of Andor? Because <laughs> somebody you told me you it's watched more like sixty six percent. Yeah, it is. You told me you watched the third episode. You I didn't say I watched the third episode. I said I watched Andor. I didn't say how much. I watched the first two episodes and I was hooked. Let's talk about them. So what we're gonna do is do the first two episodes this week and then do the next two epi- two episodes next. Because I'm a shithead. One and two this week, two, three. And so four I'll just next wait week. until Wednesday to watch both of them. Yeah, I'll just because I'm, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, you fucking you fucking. Simp. Actually, that'll be good for you. You, you can fucking just watch cook. them back to back because episode three is awesome. I'll You're tell you awesome. That right now. You're awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I so t- I tweeted after I watched these episodes. Oh uh, great! I, I, you started the last segment, dick. Um, <laughs> So I tweeted about it after I watched the all the all three episodes. Uh, you give it a give. No, no, legit. I finished watching all the episodes, and I tweeted. I hate your phone. That um, this is the kind of Star Wars show I always wanted. This is what I wanted the book of Boba Fett to be. This yeah. Is, this is to me. This is the more compelling. You want to know why this is a great show, Jay? <sighs> well, you hold on. Mm. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah, we're gonna talk about okay. it. Okay, you go, buddy. But like I was saying, when I saw the trailer, when we were t- when I was not that big into Obi Wan, but you liked it more than I did, and I what I said when I saw Andor was like, yeah, I get it. It's a prequel, but it's the kind of prequel I want where it's happening while all the Skywalker shit is happening. It's happening underneath, like everyday people, the people that are the lower level guys, and so. The minute I started watching this show, I was hooked. I was like, "Yes, this is this is the kind of grummy rebellion shit I want to see." Because you don't really see a lot of it in the Lucas movies. No, you see the uh, you see the top level of it. You a- see the heroes. In, even in the even in the you don't see the trilogy, dudes. You don't really. You don't see, see the dudes. You know, tightening the bolts on the X wings and shit. No, it's just it's Bo and it's unless they're getting killed, Luke, and it's like the yeah the heroes of it. It's nice to see lower level. Heroes, I guess. Yeah, no. Uh, I I really thought it was interesting of how this show is kind of upfront with how much more adult it is for a yeah. Star Wars project. Mm. It's simply just the fact that he went into a bar that was for uh, sex workers. Yeah, it's they a They never uh, explicitly brothel. say that, no. but we know what it is. Yeah. Which, again, it's written for adults. There's it's a scene adults. in the second episode where you almost get a sex scene. Between those two characters, uh, Tim and Bix the... and Tim. Tim, oh my God! Don't me. You haven't seen episode three yet, but fuck Tim. I already know. Fuck Tim because episode can already two. Tell. They he, lay... Episode two, he fucking gives him up. He That's calls the, the number. Ep- okay, that is the episode. I couldn't remember yeah. that was episode two or three. That I he... ended it when uh, um, what's his name um, is coming. To, finally, comes to town. Luther Rael. Yeah. But so, so is, you, let's talk you, you about it. Agree with me about the tone because I think the tone is important. Let's, ta- let's talk about it because everything about it I loved. Let's the, talk about how much you love and and yeah. trust Cassian. You you trust? Hang on, I don't trust him at all. What? <laughs> you start the show and you think, okay, this is a good guy, and he's you know he's trying to find his sister and everything like that, and then immediately within like ten minutes of that, like five minutes of that, he. Accidentally kills one guy and then deliberately kills another guy. Shoots him execution style. Right. And immediately immediately I was hooked because I knew I was going to be hooked because I, I, I think Diego Luna is a great fucking actor. But what he brings to this character is awesome. Of yeah. course, he's involved in it. He was like, yes, I want to do this character again. So awesome. Um, but immediately I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on here. But I immediately knew, okay, this show is going to test my loyalties. It's going to test my loyalties to, as to who I'm, whose side I'm on while I'm watching this show. Because right now you're on Andor's side. But then you're like, wait, I don't know if I am anymore. You just killed a guy. You know? I mean, I get why, but... but then you remember that he killed some fascists. So it's also mm. kind of like, well... well here, that's what I love. That, that's what I love. The, the show plays In the that. first two episodes, at least, he's not a spy yet. He's just a dude and, and trying in, to survive, right? And in that moment, you don't know that they work for the Empire. You don't know they work for that security team because they're just shitheads at the I ball. knew that they were security dudes because of what they said. It's Ferrix. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, the yeah, Lego yeah. set is ambush on Ferrix, and it yeah. has the guy, uh, the guy who's af- chasing after him, um, the the head guy Cyril Karn, I think is his name. Yeah. Great fucking casting for that guy, by the way. Like he's so, he's so, no, not him. That's Linus, the the tall skinny dude who's been. Oh, the. Uh, the one that's the like fucking s- weird face. Super ambitious. Yes. That guy's great, yeah, I dude. I like it. He's so squeaky. He's uh, such a s- s- creepy. And yeah. Weird and- but you but also like the way the way that he exhibits like being pissed off. Do it now. Yeah, yeah like, like let's go. Well, yeah, he 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 is like <laughs> He's like a fucking G- PE teacher and you're is, like fuck off, this man. This is what I love about it is he is like legit one of those like Hitler youth mm-hmm. fascists yeah. that like fucking buys in whole hog yep. and this shit and is like, yeah, let's fucking go. We're the fucking empire. We I gotta love, do this. I love the scene between him and his superior when they're talking, when he's basically just saying like, it, everything that his superior is saying makes sense. And the way he's reacting to everything that he's saying is just perfect fucking acting, dude. Because he's just like, he's pissed, but he's also like proud in a weird way. Because he's getting dressed speech. down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did um, you, hey, excuse me, did you modify your uniform? Some mild tailoring? Yeah. Some piping? I, I, I saw a tweet about this, and I liked it, because it's true. This show, and I think another reason I really like it, and I connect with it, is it is unabashedly a political show. This is a political statement, mm-hmm. because this show is anti-fascist, yeah. anti-cop, anti, anti-capitalism, like this, this, this show, and I like what kills me. And we'll talk about it in the Griff report because uh, we we will talk about this whole situation again. It's kind of incredible how people that should be mad at this mm-hmm. don't get mad at it for the reasons you would think they would. What are they saying? Oh, I can't wait to get there. What? Yeah, see what they but, fucking say. But that's what I mean. There's so many things if you truly believe those politics you would hate this show because this show's messaging is very anti-cop anti-fascism. But they like it? No, no. Yeah. That's not even it at all. I didn't think so. I was going to say. No, the thing they're pissed it's about. It's Star Wars. They can't the thing, like guess it. Guess what the thing they're pissed about? Oh, it's racism again. Shocker. Uh, really? I don't... They're the racists. Just... Just, just, just fuck those guys. Um, I'm having a freak Tear out. your shit, man. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but I love it. what I love about this show is it does a great job, and the themes are clearly loyalty. You, you, yeah. were, ta- you were talking about it earlier. You were talking about your test your loyalties. That's exactly what the show is going to be, and I think that's what's so fucking compelling about it. And this is what I love about Star Wars. Who's the good guy? This Who's is, really the good guy? And this is truly what I love about Star Wars. You can have the plucky action adventure classic Star Wars hero's journey story mm. and I'll enjoy it. And then you can have something like this that's very adult and deals with much different thi- I think that's what's so cool about much having darker things, because yeah. while this feels like its own show, it still feels like Star Wars to me. All the flashback shit with his uh with his Oh, and it's pro immigration, so of course they're going to hate it. The sh- the the, be- the shit people that hate immigration. And that's another thing. It's pro immigration. It's all this other shit on top of it. And it has so much confidence in its politics and mm. its storytelling yeah. that those things are there, but I don't feel like they are... It's still a Cassian it's story. Not preachy, it's still, really. it's still ultimate. It's not. It's really ulti- just all about survival. I keep looking at my phone. That's why I hate <laughs> it. It's all about survival. And all of these political things just get tied into it Mm. and that's yeah and it's never preachy it's never i mean well no because it's telling a story and those things are secondary to the story um if you're an idiot you watch the show and you're like i don't like being clobbered over the head with and it's like and i think who's clobbering you over the head i didn't and i think what we're gonna see me and i think we're gonna see with that the one dude the tall dude that works at the security thing um I won't spoil anything for you in episode yeah, three, up. but I think we're going to, <laughs> throughout the season, see the a hu- little bit more humanizing of him. And I think that's why his speech was a little bit more comedic, because I think they're going to kind of also show the other side of the people that get caught up in this, mm-hmm. that believe in this ideology, and gets get pulled into it. And I think there's going to be that level of like... Because I think 
t- t- I think what would make this more of a, an effective story would have him because he's a good actor. He's he's charismatic enough, even though he's smarmy and weird. He's not unlikable. You know, he knows how to inhabit that character, so which I, I like. I think narratively that would be cool, and I think that's what they're going to start doing. Nobody fucking cares because they're doing a really good job which of you want narratively mirroring, uh, mirroring Andor with him. And, and yeah, how because very Andor similar. is like, what is Andor trying to do? He's just trying to survive. And what is this other guy trying to do? Well, he's imposes, ambitious. He's he wants to, to rise will. the ranks. And they're very different people. But you know what? They're very. Similar too, because even with opposing goals, they're very similar. If they're in, the, if they're in each other's situations, if Andor's in, or if Cassian's in the situation as the guy in the blue, the serial Karn guy, he's gonna try and buck that, buck his supervisor to make things happen. If Karn is in the situation where he gets accosted by a couple guys and he accidentally kills one of them, he's gonna kill the other guy too. Yeah. That's the thing that is brilliant about the show is it, they reverse their their situations and they both react the same way and the both, other one did. And, and, and the funny thing is too is the ambition is what ultimately has, right. uh, has brought consequences to them because right now his, his is his unfocused. CO, the CO of, right. the, of the security thing was like they got they got too drunk they got into a fight and somebody killed. I them. loved his explanation. I was like, yeah, why not? do That's that? That's exactly what happened. Like he's just like he got they picked the fight with the wrong person yeah, and they much. got fucking iced man it happens but he was like no they you know they fucking murders one of us we gotta go after cassian, and he takes a whole fucking fleet yeah cassian's is unfocused people. and the guy in blue serial Karn is his name and the guy in blue his is folk laser focused so that's the other dichotomy yeah. between the two of them is that he's got a one-track mind and andor's just like i just want to survive beyond that i haven't thought about it man and that's really kind of a cool juxtaposition too. Is that you know you just have this you know gigantic nothing, and then this brilliant laser point, and it's just like wow. What was the name of the planet he was from? Uh, Canari. I like how that plays into it. I like how that's. Another... I'm interested to see what happens uh, with those guys. I mean, obviously, I saw where they went up to it, and the guy shot the one lady or whatever. And they but freaked out. That first shot of the show when he kills those guys is so impactful. It reminds mm. me a lot of. It reminds me a lot of the Joker and uh, the ending scene of Joker where he shoots. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. When he shoots Robert De Niro, and how loud that gunshot is. I think that's an interesting. That's what I thought of in that scene because mm. you don't think about it, but that was a, like how loud the blaster was when he shot that guy. And it's so it's such an impactful choice because it is, and you know what it is in line with his character in Rogue One because he kills that guy in Rogue One mm-hmm. because he's like I can't let these secrets out I have mm-hmm. to kill you mm-hmm. like that's what it is and based on what I've seen in the trailers he's going to infiltrate the Empire and he's going to because he's in yeah. the the regalia and you know what I like it is is there's not a lot of juxt or there's not a lot of exposition. No, um, it's kind of just go, go. And, and, and you, you, just, you, you and I, throw, you have, have to figure it out. You yeah. and I have figured. You and I have talked about this a lot. We we appreciate more, um, especially like Batman things like that. Uh, some of those types of stories we appreciate more when you don't hold our hands, when you drop us right in, like Multiverse of Madness. That was a great beginning. You're like, okay, <laughs> shit's going off, yeah, and it's you're a different strange. Like, thing. hey, welcome. The shit's already been happening. Already, it's called Multiverse. You're late. So Where the fuck you been? It's called Multiverse. So yeah. You know it's a different version of Strange. I kind of like it when you start watching a show and the, the tone of the show is, hey, where the fuck you been? We've been doing this for hours now. Yeah, it truly a little does bit, right? feel like, yeah, Cassian has been doing Dude, this Dude, you missed it. Fucking Cassian did a fucking uh, keg stand, man. We got to talk about the robot. The robot is great. The robot makes me sad. He's Because he's so lovable and loyal and just... Why is it this the only movie that has a droid that speaks... A link like actually talks and doesn't just make beeps and boops. Why did it take until this show to do it? Because they knew that the emotional weight of the of the droid actually speaking would be greater than. Dude, every time he fucking talks, it tears my heart out. Because I know something's gonna happen to him. He's like always nervous. I just just feel like some. I feel like something's gonna happen to that droid, and it's not gonna be good, and I'm not gonna like it. Oh, that's what I mean. It's like finally we understand a droid. So now we know we have known they've been sentient this whole time. Of course. And now we're finally being able to understand one instead of just. Well, besides C three PO and L three seven L or something. Who the the 
Yeah, but he droid he, from Solo. This droid is more like, uh, like I think of R two D two, like just where I would put him in my mind. But my point is that kind of does add more to it because if it just beeps and boops. What's the point? It's a great. Here's a, here's why Star Wars had it all over and still has it all over every other space saga. Whoa, you're even gonna call it? You like Star Trek though? How dare you? Well, droids aren't really a thing in Star Trek, yeah, so true. you know this doesn't really apply actually. <laughs> well, kind of. I, um, I'm just messing with you. Fuck Battle you. Star Galactica had the ba- had the best robots. You know what I liked about Battlestar Are, is Galactica the the is the, 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 the real dot. world. It's, it's the real world. Uh, you know what I really liked about Battlestar Galactica? Before we go back, is uh, how they used the uh, real life plight of the humans under Cylon occupation uh, to show what the Iraqis were feeling under our occupation. Whoa. Oh boy, conservatives were pissed about that. Get your politics. Wait out, a second. Out of this. The humans in Battlestar Galactica. Are Suicide bombers? That doesn't so- sit with our vision of America as the saviors of the world. Anyway, you man. ought to watch Battlestar Galactica, dude. That <laughs> fucking series. Holy Which one? Sh- the new one or the old one? Fuck the new one. It'd what do you be- mean? The new new one? No, or the reboot? The one that, that came out in like 06? Yeah, no. that one. Fuck whatever this is. I don't give a shit. You're never going to have a People twist. Tell me I should watch The Expanse, too. That's on Amazon. I've heard that, too. What were we talking about besides that? We're going to do an Expanse show now? No, what were we going to do? The Expanse. We were talking about Andor, wasn't we? Wasn't we? <laughs> well, we was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was making a point about something, and then I spiffed off to... The droids. We were talking about the droid. The droid is real. Somebody built that. Yeah. It's, you that's can, not you can CGI. That's, pump, like, that's an animatronic. It's a practical yeah. robot. And... I think maybe the one that Leia had in uh, Obi Wan was maybe a little CGI, but I think it was some practicality. The thing about stop bringing up that show. You shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) The thing that Star Wars has over all these other, you know, uh, science fiction, they make shit. They, the best of the best of people who make stuff for movies, who make those brilliant looking things that make movies real. They all want to work for Star Wars. Well, there's a there's a documentary on uh, Disney Plus about ILM. Oh, I don't doubt it. Wow, that was really shitty. ILM and the Lucasfilm stuff. I know, and, and and that the whole reason ILM was created is because yeah. George Lucas knew that nobody else could make do what he wanted unless he had you know a yeah Industrial Light and Magic um is yeah it came out of Star Wars because so that's yeah. that's something that I think is true that's always been with Star Wars. There's always that. While there is CG and shit like that, there mm. is a lot of stuff that feels practical and, and looks practical. And and that's that's what and that's why I like this droid. That's why the original Star Wars in seventy seven was such a revelation to audiences because up until that point, every starship, every space story, all took place on these pristine, Set. always clean. Not you know, and Star Wars was the first one to it show it more, lived in. Yeah, make it a little more authentic. Yeah, and and. Yeah. You're in a situation where you can, you can be a little bit more cheap because you can make it look grimy and right. more poor looking. You know what's really awesome actually um, is uh, uh, they actually. Which is what I love about this show is how ugly this show looks. Right. So they when they were building the original uh, like models in Star Wars, they cannibalized a lot of like models, uh, model kits yeah. uh, from hobby stores and whatnot. So uh, the funny thing is they started making stuff for. Um, Return of the Jedi, and they were like, well, this one model that we got this part for the X-Wing from is no longer made or whatever. They couldn't find it. So they literally bought a model, an X-Wing model, <laughs> and used it in the movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, but you know somebody made it. Somebody. Oh, uh, yeah. Industrial Light Magic. The next time you see space balls, you might be thinking to yourself, wow. This is really a well-made, like you know, special effects movie for a comedy. Well, that's because George Lucas loved the idea so much. He was like, "Hey, Mel, I'm gonna go ahead and let you borrow ILM so that you can make sure that all the fucking effects yeah, in your movie." Ma- if you're gonna make fun of me, do it. Th- you know, make it look good. Isn't that awesome? That yeah. Lucas was like, "Dude, yeah, that's hilarious." But yeah, he you got to do it right. He was very. He had a. He was also hands on with the robot chicken stuff and like so he, and the it's family unfortunate guy and the family guy that stuff. Star Wars uh, fans don't understand how cool Lucas is and instead they're just like fuck you prequels. And the best, my favorite thing is they don't. He understand. gave you a story that you are still following, you little bitches, <laughs> and you have the nerve, the audacity. 
Which Sorry. is one other reason I'm why I, I like this show is it very much has the spirit of the, Lu- the Lucas stuff of New Hope, the yeah, New Hope, and, and and the idea of before it became a shared where, universe, where the show is always or where Star Wars has always been focused, and Star Wars is focused on the oppressed. It's always been about the oppressed. There, that's the people that rise. The press? up. the oppressed, uh, and that <laughs> then that goes back to that interview he did with James Cameron when he said that. It was about Vietnam and Duh. the Empire's America. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Or, or, or we, we were the bad guys in that one, that's, James. That's weird. What? George Lucas sounds George like Lucas. Uh, Jim Henson. Hey, everybody. everybody. Oh, yeah? yeah? Kermit Lucas? Kermit the Frog here. Nobody talks about how waka, I Waka, waka, waka. You, you want to hear my Ray Romano? You know, I, wanna hear my Ray, I wanna hear you want to hear the trolls talk about this part of the show. you want to hear my Ray Romano so we can wrap up? Yes. Debra! That's my Ray Romano. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ray. Hey, Ray, I'm hey, your Ray. brother. I'm your brother. Oh, Ben Love Chopping with Jake and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs>